What's up my friends, now with 5 Mang here. Gonna give you an update on quite a few things. Uh, first, just wanted to show you some uh, jalapeno poppers that we made up and uh, wife hooked it up. All you reefers that are married, don't forget Valentine's Day is coming up. Watch my video of the chocolate covered strawberries and you might get you some reef tank equipment or corals or something else. This video is gonna be an update on the equipment, how the corals are doing, and my Santa Monica algae scrubber. Um, it's gonna be an update of all of that stuff. But I panned in the beginning of my uh, Jabo RW5 or 15, something like that, I got from Pelfrey. Finally broke. Uh, I cleaned it up and it is done. The little bit of flow that you do see is from the right side of my tank. It is from a power head that I got from Reef Breeders, the QP15, I believe. Anyways, it it's covered. It has a good warranty, unlike the Jabo. Uh, you buy it from Reef Breeders. You're covered under a warranty. Make sure you click on the link below if you're interested. So what I'm going to do is take off the RW15 and pit another QP on the opposite side. I am thinking, however, of getting some different pumps later on, but I'm gonna use the QP because the RW15 broke. Um, and since it's only one side of the tank that's pro being uh, provided flow, the anemones are stretched out and they seem to be enjoying the little, the less flow, if that makes sense. Just because they're stretched out, they're stretched out and stinging everything. I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm finally moving this rock of a uh, red digi. You know, it's already getting stung a lot. You can see all, a little bit of the white pieces on there, all because of these anemones. I'm seriously going to remove some of these anemones and sell them here locally and probably get down to one anemone because I have like maybe four anemones in this tank. I know I had a few... People uh, hit me up already for them, and I'm only going to sell them locally. And uh, I'm going to contact you guys once I figure out how to take them off of this rock. I do finally have the QP hooked up. It was a matter of just finding everything and then just installing it. Real easy to do. Um, I did mention that I am interested in some different flow. Uh, some different flow for my uh, frag tank i'm thinking about an ice cap gyre um and i'll probably get one of those later on not right now not right away um which i am doing a lot better because i do a lot of um impulse buying i think many of us reefers do that but i am gonna you know pay some stuff off and then eventually get an ice cap uh gyre uh, which is not too expensive and uh seems about right but that'll be probably more so on my frag tank because the qps they push a lot of water in the 150 and that's what i need so let's do an update on the santa monica algae turf scrubber this is a rain scrubber this is running also with that protein skimmer and uh, we're gonna see how it does i know some of you guys who follow me on the instagram uh, we're able to see a little bit of it, but we're going to give you a nice update on it right here. This algae turf scrubber does retail for about $800. Uh, you can buy it directly from them, Santa Monica Filtration. Just Google it. You'll click on the link. Um, and it comes ready to go. The only thing it doesn't come with is a return pump. But to be fair, I think for that price as a consumer, Maybe it should come with a return pump for the, the price that you're paying. Um, but let's take a look at some of the growth here. And I can tell you this thing just took off. It took off from, you know, just having a little bit of that uh, film on there, light film, okay? And then all the way to this green hair turf algae and was really doing a good job. They did a great job putting this thing together. I haven't had any problems with it, and you can see that thick mat is growing pretty well. I don't know why 
the algae hasn't taken off on the center. I guess it'll just give itself some time. But what I'm feeding in my tank is just one cube a day. Um, this thing can handle like four cubes a day, which is insane because I'm not going to be feeding four cubes of uh, frozen food into my tank. But you can see that it's really taken off it, from one week to the end of the week. It's really thick. That's what she said. But let's take this outside and get a better look of it away from the red lights. And uh, I'm going to show you how to clean this bad boy. I am pretty impressed on how this scrubber has grown. This is not just a little bit. It is a lot of algae turf scrubber on here. The screen. I'm going to zoom in on the screen so you can see what it looks like. You can do this yourself. You can buy a DIY. Uh, Poplar is a uh, waterfall algae scrubber like this, but this one is well built. I'm expecting this thing to have a full screen later on. You can kind of see on the screen the brown part, and that's how it initially started. It came out with like a little bit of brown slime on there, and then um, it just grew like crazy. So I'm using a plastic card to go ahead and scrape it off. I'm not going to completely scrape it off because I do want some of it to remain on the screen so it can regrow. But as you can tell, this is some good, healthy turf scrubber right here. Uh, it's doing really good. It's one of those things that is pretty amazing how thick it is. And I'm not even overfeeding my tank um, since I have had the scrubber and the scrubber has started growing stuff I've noticed that some of that sludge that was on the bottom of my sand bed has uh, kind of disappeared my tank looks a lot brighter look a lot cleaner um, the uh, car the pads that I bought from Marine Depot um, they haven't changed any colors I was thinking that they had I had some kind of metal in my aquarium uh, and that's why you know LPS was dying like crazy but the algae turf scrubber has the ability to take out metals take out all those phosphates take out quite a bit of nasty stuff because it's the natural for filtration of the ocean you know uh, and this is pretty cool when you're able to have a little box like this that doesn't take up a lot of space in your sump and uh, can grow some pretty nice green stuff but anyways that's just my opinion. I want to know, are you guys running algae turf scrubbers? Would you guys consider running an algae turf scrubber? Um, let me know in the comments below. Uh, my experience with algae turf scrubbers in the past is um, I would run them, but I don't re really like them because, um, well, at least the DIY ones that I made because of the salt creep. Uh, the salt creep would get everywhere and I would have, it would be just make too much noise. But, uh, I will give Santa Monica some credit here. They do make some nice turf scrubbers. But on the negative side from Santa Monica, I will say that my uh, surf, with, this is the uh, surf scrubber, didn't come with the return pump. And for that price tag, they could probably get you a return clump, pump included. And also the uh, one that floats. Um, the one that I did the last video didn't come with the air pump. And that one, you know, the air pump wasn't too bad because you can get them on Amazon. And in fact, the return pump on this one, you could go to Harbor Freight and probably buy a cheap one from there or um, Jabo or something like that. But aside from that, good quality, good LEDs. The stuff is waterproof. And I'm going to go ahead and install this back into my sump. I'm pretty sure that my pod population has taken off since having algae turf scrubber. Um, I know they do really good in Chato and especially on this turf. Installing it is not very hard to do. You just clean it up. I'm just getting the little pieces off of it and I'm pretty impressed because I did have a big protein skimmer uh, competing with this uh, turf scrubber and maybe if I didn't have a protein skimmer, the uh, turf scrubber would take off. But I'm somebody that believes in protein skimmers as well. You know, protein skimmers work great. And if you have the money and the space, get yourself an ATS or make yourself one. But uh, installation of this 
really easy. Coming up here in a few minutes, I'm going to give you an update on the tank, on the 150. And then the next week, we'll talk about the uh, nanos and the frag tanks and what's going on there. And once again, if you have any questions, just drop the comments down below. That's going to conclude the algae turf scrubber section of the video. Let's get into the corals and how everything is doing in the 150. I always enjoy a top-down view of the tank, kind of let you know and give you a different perspective of the colors, of the corals, the growth, and how everything else is doing. It's a lot different than just looking at it with the tank right in front of you because the corals have different colors. This coral right here, a lot of you have contacted me about, I don't know the name of it, I forgot. I got it from Cultivated Reef and it's been doing great. Um, you can see, hopefully you can see some of the colors here. Uh, I've turned off the the power heads, the QPs on the left side, right side of the tank. So the only thing that's running right now is my uh, return pump. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. You can see the Digi has done a lot better from spacing it out from the anemones. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some of these pieces and glue them onto the overflow. Some of the SPSs because I had to move them because of my anemones were walking all over the damn place. My purple stylo is huge, doing really good. I got it as a little branch. You know, I did plan for it to have some good growth. And it's a good thing because it's taking up a lot of space. This next coral, forgot the name of it. I got it from 67 Mustang uh, on Instagram, Corey. And it's also a fast spreader. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to frag it and make some room because it's shadowing out some of the other corals. Now, I wish my buddy Enrique had his 180 up, which is, if you didn't know before or you followed me in the past videos, I had a 180 gallon reef tank and my buddy Enrique bought it. And if he had it up, I would be able to go ahead and give him some of these corals, give him a lot of these frags. Um, this is the glue that I'm using. It's great glue. You can buy it from the dollar store. Highly recommend it. It comes in two pack and uh, it's actually a dollar if you go to a true dollar store, not a dollar ninety nine. It's actually a dollar two pack. But anyways, um, I'm going to be fragging some of these SPSs and I'm going to be using this glue because I need to make give some light to the other corals that I have in the tank. Let's take a look, kind of take everything in and see the colors. I'm going to plan on doing another video with some gel filters with just the blue LEDs on. So you can check out the tank like that. But I like to kind of show you how everything looks during the daytime. Um, T5 just turned off. I do like doing videos with the T5s on. But you can see how everything is. It's true colors. And they do have some nice colors on it. Some people just do videos with gel filters. So the colors look even more awesome. But I like to show you both. With the T5s on with the gel filters and you know you guys can be the judge of that that one piece right here looks awesome with the blues and it still looks awesome during the daytime with digis you don't have to really glue them down or put them on frag plugs if you want something cool like mine all you have to do is get some digi and kind of just push it in the cracks of the rock and you know what, before you know it, if you leave it alone, it'll encrust on the rock. It'll start growing all over the place and it'll do good. But you got to kind of keep an eye on it because your flow will push it around if you don't glue it. But then again, if you do glue it, a little bit of glue goes a long ways on this rock. And this rock right here is going to look pretty sweet. This is just your regular orange digi and I like it. I used to have some forest fire digi. Don't have it anymore. 
And I used to have some bubblegum digi. I don't have it anymore. I did frag some of that to my buddy Alan. Hopefully I can get a piece of that back. If not, I'm going to probably have to order it again. But uh, hopefully I can get another frag of it. I kind of cleaned up that frag rack that I had on the top left corner of the tank, which I just showed you. Had a lot of this orange digi all over the place. Even though it's faded a little bit, a lot of those pieces, I'm going to make try to make this a cool digi rock. I'm laying it sideways. I, it's growing upwards. It's going to be huge. It's going to look crazy, hopefully. Um, and we'll see. It'll It should color up. Um, I'm, I don't plan on moving it around or anything like that. It should color up again with the LEDs and the T5s. Uh, in fact, the LEDs that I'm using are Reef Breeders Photon. It's been a good fixture so far. I haven't had any problems. Um, I don't have to mess with the controllers or the settings or anything like that. I did a video on that if you want to know the settings. I'm keep I'm still running those original settings. And then I added T5. Um, I have two different bulbs, the Coral Plus and the Blue Plus. But... When it's time to change my T5 bulbs out, which will be later on this year, I think I'm just going to do two Coral Plus uh, ATI bulbs because it covers most of the full spectrum. And uh, But I do like the color combination of the Blue Plus and the Coral Plus, but my preferred is the Coral Plus because the Coral Plus bulbs still look a little bit blue and white and it has a nice blend to it. You see my Melanaris wrasses swimming around, and that's because I have those worms underneath my frag plugs and frag discs. If you don't have a Melanaris wrasses and you have a bigger tank than just a Nano, highly, highly recommend getting a Melanaris wrasses. If not, there's other options. You can get like a six-line wrasses, but I really don't recommend those because they are pretty mean. And this tank, the Melanaris wrasses has been an ideal fish takes care of all my parasites um, when eats bugs I had originally got them because of red bugs a long time ago when I had a 120 and this is one of my favorite fish looks cool and pits in work if only this ras could eat those Asterina starfish I'd be good to go still have the harlequin shrimp in here somewhere haven't seen it and it's probably time to drop a, another chocolate chip strawberry, chocolate chip starfish. I'm thinking about chocolate chip, chocolate covered strawberries, aren't they? But um, I did kind of move some stuff around is what I wanted to show you. I have on the left, I have some plastic stuff called reef welder. Um, I took it off of the rock from up here in the front. I still have a little bit and because I had a shelf rock there. but um, what I'm going to do is order some more reef welder, but the purple stuff. I bought the white stuff because it was cheaper, and I figured that coralline algae was going to grow on it. But I haven't had no luck with the coralline algae growing on it. So that's why I'm going to get some of the purple reef welder from Marine Depot. Mix it up with the white stuff because you can uh, reuse it, and I'll be good to go. I did frag up some of this coral right here. Uh didn't frag too much I just fragged like a big piece um, and I'm gonna go ahead and probably get rid of that here locally to somebody else who's into it but uh, even this digi right here looks kind of faded it's just red digi and I'm gonna pit it also on this uh, digi rock right here and hopefully it'll look cool and maybe become a centerpiece of coral the digi does grow pretty fast and uh, it looks pretty cool with the blues on. I like the deep uh, reds on it. But after a day of fragging and moving things around in the tank with that gel super glue, um, it never fails to get some on your hands. Doesn't matter if you wear gloves or not. You're always going to get super glue on your hands. And this super glue can come off pretty good. Just a little bit of warm water. I found out that even lotion takes it off. You can see right there. But uh, 
we're going to go ahead and uh, end this video here shortly. We'll give you another video here this week. And uh, don't forget, I'm also going to be giving away a Marine Depot hat. So make sure you subscribe and you turn on the bell notification so that way you can uh, keep up to date on what's going on the channel. I like to keep my updates coming out on Sunday, but sometimes things happen and you'll get a video later on in the week or next week. Well guys, let's go ahead and end this video here. I hope you guys have a good one. You guys let me know what, what you think of the tank and anything else. And you guys take care, man. Have a good one.